And just to clarify, uh, Battletech is a uh, long, probably, probably in the 80s, 70s, uh, 86, tabletop. 1986. 86. It's about mechas. Uh, that's where Mech Assault got its roots, uh, roots from, along with Mech Warrior as well. Mech Warrior was the role-playing aspect uh, of the board game. Yep. Um, normally played with little metal miniatures on hex maps. Yes, so what I started doing in about 2000, or one of my friends is, he said, you know, you build these mechs, you've been building them since you were 15, how cool would it be to actually run the game with these as the miniatures? And it, uh, the first year I ran the game with, with the miniatures was actually here at our time. And uh, you know, I contacted the gaming department and said, hey, you know, I'd like to do this. What do you think of this idea? They're like, that sounds awesome. How much space do you need? And I proceeded to run it for nine years straight. And the beauty of it is, as you actually play the game, as the guys damage the units, I'll go up and actually start ripping parts off. So by the time you're done, you could have piles of parts kind of trailing the, the, the carnage to wherever they, they stop in, in the next round to fight. If the damage is targeted, like, for left arms, yes. you would actually physically take it. It depends on the percentage of damage. Like, let's say, for example, their arm armor might take 20 points before it goes into the skeleton. Um, so if I take, if they take like two points, yeah, that turn I'm not going to take anything off of it. When you start talking the higher percentages, then I'll start to strip the the armor off of the limb. And, and over the years, I've gotten to the point where I can actually do that before you start compromising structural integrity of the design. And let me interrupt you there because that's quite amazing. I mean, I, I can truly appreciate what you got. You got the love for mechs. Yes. You got the love for Lego. Yeah. And, and, and you. And you I understand that, so I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, unfortunately. Uh, but you got those two combined together, and you're actually role playing. It's yep. a role playing game. You're actually role playing with the Lego you love and physically removing pieces yep. compared to the structural integrity of oh, your yeah. current mech. That is role playing on fun, on geek. Yep. Wonderful sandwich. So, yeah, uh, essentially, this year I'm not running Mar at, at Marcon, but I have in years past. I also run it at a, a Lego centric uh, convention that will be Father's Day weekend out by Chicago. In Chicago. It's called Brick World. Mm -hmm. They also have satellite public display shows, but it's not like the convention environment. It's pretty much people like me coming in, setting our stuff up, displaying it for the public, and then packing it up and go home. But it's, it's, it's to me, it's a lot of fun. It's just, if I don't get to build, um, yeah, my wife will kick me down in the basement and tell me, go away, go, go, go. You're, you're fun to be around. You're lucky to have a wife that will support you she in doesn't, your Lego. She doesn't, uh, doesn't. <laughs> she doesn't uh, share the obsession, but mm -hmm. she tolerates it. So That's good. Um, and uh, how many mechs do you have? Uh, currently assembled uh, probably somewhere around 80 to 90. And these are your own, your MOCs, your own original creations? Yeah, my own creations. Uh -huh. The only exception would be I do actually have one canon rulebook battle mech, and I had to make a Marauder if you're familiar with it. Yeah. Or Zentradi Officer's Battle Pod from Robotech, or in Macross, Macross, Macross yeah. it's also referred to as the Glau. Okay. But it's the only rulebook design I've ever done. Uh, when Battletech started, they borrowed, borrowed uh, without license, a lot of old stompy robots from early anime, Crusher Joe, Fangus and Dugan, and Robotech and Macross was most of the original Max. So when Wizards of the Coast bought all the rights to it, they quietly just killed all of those and re-released them with different sculpts. Same names because they weren't the same names that were used in the cartoons. But, uh, and how many people did you have uh, during your Battletech Lego? Uh, the first year I ran it, they gave me tables and I quickly folded them up and rolled them off to the side. Oh, okay. uh, and the funny thing was that year, they put me in the very back of the miniature gaming room. Which was great, because you know, we didn't have to worry about people walking through the space, but it was so disruptive to the other games, the following year they said, no, you, you can't be there anymore. Uh, 
I said, okay, well, wh what's going on then? I said, well, you'll, you'll get the space in between the gaming rooms out front, which meant I got more space. It ended up being something like a 14-foot by 17-foot trapezoid we had to play in. The only problem is, even if you put stanchions up, some people just don't seem to understand. That means stay out unless you're the ones playing. You know, it didn't matter if I close it off completely, but I usually like to keep one side open so the players could come and go. And I'd have everybody other in the room that just, you know, couldn't walk around to get into the other gaming room. All right, and I have two questions. Yes. Um, the first one would be about your Lego collection. Yeah. Uh, I guess, how, how big is your Lego collection, if you don't mind sharing, and what's your favorite piece? Ah, uh, favorite piece, that's... That's difficult. I do the easy one. What's uh, about how much, how large is your Lego collection? My collection at this point is sorted by color, okay, including uh, loose bricks. Uh, well, I, it's loose bricks. Um, I have stuff in boxes I haven't even opened yet because it's it's parts or it's stuff that they, they produce it for a year and you want to hold on to at least one copy. Um, my collection is probably worth more than forty thousand dollars. I've been collecting since I was eight. Uh, my black alone takes up a 35 gallon tub, uh, light gray is the same size tub, and then each other color, except for if it's like rarer colors, is those 15, 18 gallon totes. So you might say I have a, a, a good size collection. Just, okay. Just, just, just a little bit. That's, and I actually <laughs> currently have an 18 gallon tub that's not sorted yet, because as we buy parts, sets for specific parts, Whatever I'm not needing in that point ends up in that bin, and so I gotta, I gotta get back to sorting. It took me two and a half years to actually sort it by color when we finally decided to do that, and that was with uh, a couple people who might come over and just right, so sort. We washed it too as well. Um, you bought it in the garage sale. No, I you, you kind of garage sale Lego is kind of iffy <laughs> because the thing is you don't want teeth marks, you don't want stuff that's been discolored because people that live in that house smell. So, I know a lot of people that just kind of avoid garage sale Lego. It's more like, if you see a set on discount and you know, hey, that's got a bunch of pieces I could use in it. But you also have a site called Bricklink. It's an amazing site. Oh, it's, it's awesome. You know, you can all go on there and say, hey, I want this piece, I want it in this color, and I'm looking for this many of it, and I really don't want to go through a million different people to get it. So you look at, okay, well, they want this much for it, but they have 100 of it versus this guy that wants three cents less for it, but only has 20. Yep. Uh, there, there's been times I've ordered 400 of the same piece at a time, only to find out it wasn't enough. So. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Stuff I use. The stuff.